Hey guys, Phil Baumhart here. So for today's Knife of the Week, I've got the Tercio Bowie model to uh, debut. So this is going to be a stock removal offering that I'm going to be doing. So basically the impetus for this is I developed some persistent tendonitis in my uh, wrist. So I've been trying to take a break from blacksmithing to, to let that heal. So I decided to come up with some stock removal designs so that I could still sell knives and make stuff and without going completely insane. Uh, and I also kind of wanted to make an offering that was a little more affordable than some of the giant fully forged uh, buoys that I've been doing. So, so the price point for these right now is pretty pretty decent in my opinion. Um, they're all right right now. They're all 300 or under, uh, which isn't bad uh, considering some of the kind of like big brand knife makers out there, like Montana Knife Company or Half Face Blades. But I wanted to make something that was really eye catching, unique, uh, but also functional. So. So I, had, so I had a lot of fun uh, working up uh, designs, and so this is, uh, this is kind of the, the first stock removal knife design that I want to show you. So, so it was a lot of fun uh, trying to come up with a, uh, a cool functional design within the parameters of the, uh, of the existing uh, knife steel stock that I had, and also trying to find something that was unique in a... Uh, in a market that's pretty saturated. So the design I ended up with isn't, uh, you know, groundbreaking by any means, but it's basically a, a short buoy knife. This is the two inch ADCRV2 stock, 3 16th per usual. Uh, so we have a long uh, clip point, just enough uh, bare spine there that if you wanted to hold it uh, like this, you can put your thumb there. You've got some jimping, did some uh, file work on the, uh, the spines of all these, the, the kind of vine file work, just because I like it. And then I did this kind of Jason Knight large palm swell here, which uh, looks good and, and it feels really good in the hand. It locks in your hand. So any sort of, any sort of uh, chopping or slashing strikes, the knife is very secure in your hand. This, uh, this buoy design is basically kind of a, a fighter. So I wanted to make sure that there's basically a uh, guard or a, or a hand stop. These have all got fully sharpened false edges and then I also threw in a Spanish notch just because uh, just because I like them uh, you don't really see that too often there's a few makers doing it but for a knife design that is a, uh, a fighter you know if you look at the old buoy lore uh, it's speculated that these are kind of a uh, put on there to be a blade catch of sorts not that I see that functioning uh, on this particular knife like that at all but I like that kind of uh, thought behind it so these are all full tank construction so it's the full slab of ADC RV2. I do hollow out the steel a little bit to just to sort of take away some of the weight. They got a nice, they got a nice hefty feel. Grip is comfortable in, in kind of your, uh, your hammer grip. You can hold it like that, put your thumb up here for saber grip. And it's also really comfortable in a reverse grip if, uh, if you're one of those people that likes to use uh, the reverse grip. The shape of this butt end is kind of cool because you can put a, put a palm there if you need to do a reinforced thrust uh, and you can also use it uh, for striking so you kind of have this point here so you can you can uh, strike a forearm what have you I'm not really much of a knife martial artist but I enjoy watching the uh, the YouTube videos and and studying up on it and I've, I have practiced it uh, from time to time but with this sort of semi-production system I've got going on they're all still they're, everything's still done by hand I'm cutting them out everything's still hand ground shaping the handles polishing them up, you know, cutting in the, cutting in the file work by hand, you know, all that process is still the same on any other knife that I would make. It's just, I'm not blacksmithing on them. I'm still heat treating them myself. So they go in the forge that way. I throw my maker's mark on there. So it's still going to be, still going to be a high quality knife. It's going to do everything you want it to do, but quite a bit cheaper than what it would be if I was trying to forge this all to shape. Another, another thing I kind of liked about this project is that uh, I was able to experiment with different uh, handle materials. So all four of these handles are handles that I haven't really worked with before. So I was able to get, uh, you know, knife scale stock. That's the right size that, that fits on here. That was another kind of design parameter that was, uh, that was fun. So you get these little five inch by uh, one and a half by three eighth inch, uh, you know, knife scales. This is, uh, this is walnut. But uh, I, you know, wanted to design a handle where I could pick up these uh, 
handle material is real easy and try out different things. So this one is uh, black canvas micarta. I got a bunch of this stuff from Pops Knife Supply. So uh, it was interesting working with the micarta and trying to figure out how to get it to look nice and how to, how to finish it, etc. This is going to be a uh, blood wood, which is a fairly, you know, inexpensive handle material, but I think it looks real nice. It, it took a, a sanding real well, nice and nice and smooth. Uh, so that's a that's a good looking handle to me. This one here is buffalo horn, water buffalo horn. So uh, it comes in different uh, styles. This one arrived to me just pure black. Um, so trying to get the polish on this was uh, was really kind of tough, but I think the end result looks freaking great. Um, a little bit thin. This one's a little bit of a thinner handle than say like the the micarta, but I don't know. This one's just got a really nice feel. Feels really good in the hand. Um, and it's certainly lighter than the micarta. The micarta is probably the, the heaviest one. It's some it's some dense stuff. And this is going to be uh, sheep's horn, so a ram horn. Uh, I think they, they sell it as as sheep's horn. This was kind of cool to work with. Got a nice feel when it arrived. One of the slabs was. Um, pretty darn thick and then this one was real thin so it's a little bit of a challenge to to get a comfortable handle out of it but I was able to make it work so it's not not super uh, even but that's just sort of a byproduct of the particular material but uh, I think it looks cool this one's got a little bit more of that uh, exterior uh, uh, bark I think they call it and this one I was able to kind of just sand it all the way down uh, almost all the way I did want to leave a little bit of the of the horn on there, but still a good feeling knife. This one I was playing with the design a little bit and I have more of a protruding uh, Spanish notch that forms more of a of a proper guard, if you will. But uh, they've all got, they're all pretty well balanced actually. So finger right there, it's a little bit, you know, the balance is right, is gonna be about right at the center, maybe a little blade heavy at the handle, but Again, for a fighting knife, I personally like that. And then with this uh, palm swell here like this, you can you can grip it with two fingers back here and use this for chopping or snap cuts if you need to do some uh, limbing or something like that out in the woods. And then for the, uh, the sheaths, I opted to go for a scout carry sheath for all of these because one of my popular sellers on Etsy has been the uh, aftermarket sheaths for buck knives, cold steel, mora. Uh, so the scout sheaths have been a real popular seller for me on Etsy. So decided it'd be nice to make a, uh, you know, a original knife with a scout carry sheath. So these have all got the brown leather. And then for the buffalo horn, I did a, a black leather with the brass, a little bit of, um, tooling around the edges, um, which I think complement this knife real well. This is, this is a, uh, a good looking knife. Uh, but basically, um, they've got slits on both sides of the sheath, so you could actually rethread, uh, pull these straps out, rethread them on the other side and do a cross draw. But as they're set up right now, they're, they're ideal for uh, carrying, they're ideal for carrying at the small of the back for a right-handed draw. So you'll reach behind you, pop the thumb brake, and then just draw the knife. So in a, um, if you put them on the other side and you do the, the cross draw, same thing as one on the other side of your body, just reach your hand across, pop it, draw it. Uh, you can put this on a backpack sheath. You could throw this onto uh, molly webbing on a, on a backpack or, or a vest or whatever, whatever sort of gear you got. But this is sort of a versatile sheath design. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about with the, uh, the cross draw configuration. So you see, uh, I've pulled the straps from this side, put them over here. Um, so that way it's worn this away and this would be against your body and you just draw it just like that. So this is actually the very first tercio I did. Uh, it's a, uh, a drop point um, and then I adapted the design to the, the buoy. You see the protruding guard has got much more mass out front, much more blade heavy, which I like as a, as a woods blade. This is a walnut handle. Uh, I think I'm going to be keeping this one as it happens. Yeah. So, uh, what's kind of cool about this, uh, having this model is if that you can message me on Etsy and say, Oh, could I get a tercio with a drop point and a, and a, you know, Buffalo horn handle and a black sheath or, you know, whatever the kind of the, the variations that you want. Just shoot me a message and uh, and I can make that for you. But uh, yeah, so if you want one of these, you can 
Check out the Etsy web store. Link is going to be in the description box. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I'll be kind of posting the knives as they uh, become available. But yeah, I think it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool knife design. I'm happy with it. I'm going to keep, keep, keep tweaking it. Keep, keep working at it, and we'll see what else I can come up with. So uh, that's all I got for you guys today. As always, I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for the support. And until next time, be more Viking. Thank you.